Hey, I'd like to thank you for coming back to another episode of The Exponential Files. I'm Larry Laufer, your host, joined by Jim Lowenstern, our co-host. And this is the place where you want to be in real estate. If you want to meet some people you want to be, certainly people you should know. And some people you think that, oh, I wish I had thought of that. Our guest today is Amanda Williams. She has a business in Raleigh, North Carolina, but she's known as Amanda, the traveling realtor. So welcome to the show, Amanda. Great to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, you started a, a good long while ago, but you've had several things that have happened in your life that kind of directed it. And um, the first thing was a sickness in your family, and that woke you up. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So I've always known that I wanted passive income. Um, so I've always had long-term rental properties, but as probably you and a lot of your listeners know, long-term rental properties are great, um, but they don't really make you that much money per door per month, maybe a few hundred dollars. And so um, when my dad got sick, he had cancer. And so uh, we ended up taking him down to Mexico for some alternative cancer therapies down there because I don't believe in the way that the U.S. deals with cancer, with chemotherapy. He was 82 years old. So we went down there and we put our house, our personal property on Airbnb because we didn't really know how long we were going to be gone for. And uh, we did that and that thing just took off and it was just like light bulb moments. And that really is what you know, forced us, forced us uh, into getting into the Airbnb, you know, market. And it's just been, you know, great ever since then. Um, you know, get to find not the all. good. And bad things. Yeah, but that that's not all, Amanda. I mean, um, it was fortuitous. It's not fortuitous. Your father had cancer, but it was fortuitous that when you went down there and and put your house up for rent, you realized that there was a difference between long term rental, mid term rental, short term rental. So talk a little bit about those different kind of uh, aspects of rental. And and how much more money you were making versus, exactly. you know, let's just say you rented out your house for a year to somebody. Were you renting out your house shorter term? Yeah. yeah. So um, great point. Yeah. So we were, it made us so much more money than we ever thought possible. So um, on our normal long-term rental properties, we were cash flowing between 200. Our best one was 400, but that's only because I'd had that house forever. And the, you know, I didn't know very much on it. Right. Um, but this particular property, this was our personal property. So we locked off the attic, the garage, my office, um, our master bedroom closet, threw that thing on Airbnb for a nightly rental rate. And it made us, in the first two weeks, it paid our mortgage, which was $1,500. And then the other two weeks was pretty much all profit, you know, minus utilities and all that. Um, so we ended up making, it was about $2,700, I want to say, on that property um, in that in that one month that we were in Mexico. And now that same property, because now I just travel and I'm living in Cabo San Lucas right now. So that same property is bringing in between $3,700 to $4,000 a month, the same property. And now it's that's, just, it's a that's net, that's net to you. Yeah. No, 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 no. Sorry. That is gross. So gross. let's say it's $4,000. I've got about $2,100, $2,200 a month in expenses on that property. And so, you know, we're looking at... 1800 17 1800 in profit so that oh, yeah. one yeah. property that i could have rented that as a long-term rental and i could maybe get 2000 which i would profit maybe 300 so i took my profit from long-term rental 300 to a what i'm doing now is a mid-term rental which is a 30-day stay all the way up to 1800 dollars on that one house there are places in the United States where Airbnb, where people come and go from properties, uh, it can be problematic, but it it really isn't if you set it up correctly and you, you use your systems and you use your marketing, which we're going to get to how brilliantly uh, you do that. What is it called? Uh, Carolina Rentals? Uh, uh, Carolina Raleigh. Furnished. Yeah, it's our company is Carolina Furnished Rentals in Raleigh, North Carolina. Right. 
So uh, this show is all about exceptional EXP agents. What brought you to EXP and how are they promoting you and your business? You're an icon agent, aren't you? I'm actually not an icon agent. Um, I quit selling three years ago. Uh, to focus on my real estate portfolio, to focus on, you know, I sell a course now to focus on my team. I am top 1% in the company. Uh, that is because my revenue share organization is is large enough to qualify for that. So um, yeah, it's it's been amazing. The reason I came over, I had my own firm, right. uh, but it was just me. <laughs> I was flipping houses and, and, you know, I was stuck in Raleigh, North Carolina. And the opportunity that I saw was that I was already leading investment groups for women and people wanted to join me, but I did not want to be held liable for them. So I didn't want them to join my little firm because I didn't want the extra layer of, you know, liability and just headache that came along with that. And so when I saw the EXP model, I was like, wait a minute, that means I can partner with all of these agents, like not even like all over the, at that point, it was just the United States and Canada. Um, that was five and a half years ago. But that's what really opened my eyes because I was like, oh my gosh, I can have partners in like all of these different states that I want to go travel to because I've lived nine beautiful years in California. And so I went to California and, you know, built a little team there. And now every single time that I go to California, it's a tax write-off because I'm going to help my team grow. And now we're in 36, I think we're in 36 U.S. states and five countries. So yeah, it's it's it, it's given me the ability to travel and, you know, go and, and help these other agents grow their groups and grow their businesses. And it's just fun for me. And it's a tax write-off. <laughs> There are a lot of people that understand that. Uh, and uh, so I, have, I have a question if we can go back to the Airbnb. I'm I'm just wondering, so uh, are you also renting apartments and then furnishing them and then putting them on Airbnb? And yeah, what what what's what's the whole business look like? Yeah. So let me take a step backwards. <laughs> um, so when we first started, we were 100 percent Airbnb. We own the properties ourselves. We got, we ended up getting five properties, owned all of them. Then we found out that we could actually do a rent to rent. So that is what we call a rental arbitrage, where you go to the landlord and you say, hey, Mr. Landlord, um, this is my business. I want to use your property to, you know, have my people, my, my clients come and stay in the property while we're looking for them a home, whatever your pitch is, right? That was my pitch. And so we started doing that. And so then we would rent the property from Mr. Landlord for, let's just say, $1,500 a month. We would go in, we would furnish it. We set up all utilities. We make it beautiful. We do all the marketing. And then we turn around and we rent that property for $3,000 to $3,500 a month. So as long as I am cash flow positive, at least $1,000 a month per door, I'm happy. Um, there's a lot of properties that we're making a lot more than that per month, but that is the, that's the way that we've been doing this. So at this point, uh, we only own five of our 20. So we have 20 properties currently we own five and the other ones are either arbitrage to so the rent to rent, or they are investors that have came along and they know us, they know our business. They've actually stayed in our properties, a lot of them. And so they were like, hey, if I buy some houses, will you tell me which houses to buy? And then can I partner with you on this? And so we've started doing that as well. So anyway, for anybody doing the math at home, that's a minimum of $20,000 a month in passive income. And the whole word passive, though, I know that you'll say this, Amanda, passive is not really passive. I mean, you have to have the idea, you have to set up the system, you have to keep the system working, but it's not the day-to-day -day grind. And that's the beauty of, of um, what is attracted here in EXP. We've had so many other people that, that they have brilliant out-of-the-box ideas, make them work, and are willing to share. So talk a little bit about your teaching program. Yeah, so um, I help other real estate agents only because my pitch, everything that I do is is based around, you know, hey, I own a real estate brokerage and this is how we help our clients and relocation clients. So um, I really teach them how to generate more buyer leads. So the relocation people coming in, um, the, the money, the monthly, you know, the $1,000 per door, 
that's okay, right? <laughs> I mean, that's it's good money. It's good money. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It yeah. is leveraged. It is leveraged money, right? Because you're still having to work for that. There's still marketing and messaging and cleaning and all of that that goes into it. But the real money that comes into this as a real estate agent or broker uh, is you're able to generate tons of leads coming in who are going to be staying in your properties. And then either you or one of your agents on your team can go and help them purchase a home. And so yeah. that's where the commission income comes in. Right. And so that's why I teach real estate agents, because um, I just see there's, there's so many ways to make money with this. I mean, when you, yeah. you could go and you could add on, you know, car rentals to this and all kinds of stuff, which we've done. And it's just a, it's just a genius little business that has, has all these little. Well, yeah, it, it, it really is. Um, I uh, have an artist friend who was struggling with his art and decided to uh, put it on t-shirts and and clothes and he sells more of that and it's just has his art on it so his art became fashion it's uh if you are an uh, uh entrepreneur uh exp is the place for you you know because you're going to rub up against always have good people around you and you're going to rub up against people who have had really good ideas that are doing well for them so what's in the future for your for your company companies so there's some really exciting stuff coming down the pipeline. Um, now that I've been living um, in Mexico for the last two and a half years, it's really opened my eyes to international investments. So I'm building a overwater bungalow right now in Belize. And I, uh, I'm, I'm really, I'm open to other, a lot of other countries. I'm looking at Panama. I'm looking at Nicaragua. Obviously, Mexico has my heart right now. Um, and then, so that that's really it to have these these vacation rental properties in different you know locations. Sure. And really, just helping my agents, helping my group, helping my students um, get to that point and travel the world. Like my passion yeah. is to travel the world, help other people travel the world. And um, we actually just bought a unit on a, it's called a residency at sea. So it's, it's a big ship and you buy a condo on it and you actually own it and you travel around the world and it takes three and a half years to go completely around the world. But to me, that made sense because now that gives me the ability to go into all of these different countries and right. do EXP presentations, help the agents there learn about, you know, the EXP model and if it's an area that I really like, then maybe we'll get an investment property there. And you can write it off. And I can write it off. So Amanda, yes. are you are you renting any of these properties just for one night? I do not do that. No. Okay. Um, so, so let's talk about that because you know when we think about Airbnb, it's constant turnover, wear and tear on the property, um, cleaning. I mean. Well, let's let's face it. There's a there's a lot there. Changing linens, replacing linens, you know. So, yes. tell tell yes. us tell us what the real model is. What what's the minimum rental, and and how do you figure out how to, I guess, how do you vet the occupants, the tenants, your clients? Yeah. So when I first started out, um, like I said, I was only on Airbnb. And so at that point we did a three night minimum stay yeah. and I would suggest everyone like set your minimum stay to three night minimum, maybe four a night. Um, so that's just because the, the turnover. And then if you're going to get someone booking, you know, Friday and Saturday night, every weekend, that's only eight days a month and you're going to lose. Like there's yeah. a very slow, there's a very slim chance. Someone's going to book a two day in the Some, middle of the week. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one thing. Um, if you fast forward to kind of what we're doing now, COVID did this to us. Like COVID opened our eyes to understanding that, oh my gosh, there is this 30 day stay market where we can market to people who need a place for one, two, three, four months at a time. And so that's our main business right now. Now, if I have a vacancy for two or three week period, because that one person checked out and someone else is not checking in until next month, then we will put that on Airbnb. Um, but I do have a five night minimum. And I think 
it's just personal preference, honestly. Yeah. Like yeah. we don't want to deal with the messaging and the turnover and all of that um, multiple times that week or for those three weeks when we could just get a really good client coming in for a week and just making our life a little bit easier. I sure. mean, sure. We're, not, we're not there, you know? Sure. So, um, who, on who the average, you? on the average, it's three nights uh, for Airbnb. The average is three nights or more, and five nights. Setting your own schedule is a, is a brilliant thing to do, because you know the Airbnb rentals they actually pay for the cleaning. You, if you have a month long, then you would pay for the cleaning. So that's a small cost, but it's a control factor as well. Well, actually, my even my monthly rentals pay for the cleaning. So okay. I charge them up front. So when someone comes into our property, um, I do 30 day stays only. So if someone's going to stay with me for two months, I will intentionally write the contract twice. So on November 30th, I will do a 30 day contract. So that'll take them until December 30th. I'll have the house blocked out, but then on December 30th, they'll get another lease. And that other lease is for another 30 days, which at that point payment is due. You pay to stay, you don't pay, you leave, right? Your lease is up. And this actually just happened to me uh, last week where I had someone who didn't pay and she actually wrote a bad check. Um, and so we ended up, we were able to get her out of our house within, you know, that we actually got her out that day. But if I had had to take it to the legal level with the eviction process, it was an expedited eviction because- I had that I had her on a 30 day stay, which right. fell into short term rental law, not long term rental law. Right. So that's really important for your listeners who are out there doing midterm rentals. To, it's important to know what is what is the law for your state, because you never want to flip over into that long term rental law because it'll take you the full eviction process to get them out if they choose not to leave. Six months. So, so how how big was the guy that got her out in one day? I'm just wondering. We can't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 it, it could be a a short very or angry how many, person or how many guys does it take <laughs> it took some really good legal language that you need yeah. to know about and yeah. we did send one of our employees over to sit in the car and watch mm -hmm. them pack their stuff yeah sure it was easy gig for that guy for a person if they didn't have to physically get involved and you yeah, well, we, you can't we had, physically get involved. We, we that, had one years ago. I, I never, I never tell this story, but I'll tell it now. Uh, one of my, uh, one of my agents said, "Oh, my parents are in Florida. They want to rent out their apartment." I go, oh, "Okay." So she rents it out, and when she's renting it out, and th and this is how you learn. You learn by the mistakes. No one, no one writes this book and says, "Here's all the mistakes. Don't make them." So. She, she vetted this woman. She called the woman's um, place of employment and uh, got to speak to someone in HR about her and everything looked good. And she moved in. And of course, the check bounced. OK. Uh, and we now only take cash or bank funds. I mean, if you're moving in today or tomorrow, it's not going to be a personal check. You're moving in next month. Sure. Personal checks. Fine. So we learn from that. But it turns out that this woman ran the switchboard and took all the calls at that company. And she was the person answering the phone and then might have changed her voice a little bit and gave herself glowing a glowing recommendation. Yeah. There are yeah, cheaters. Bounce. Yeah, there are cheaters out there. And um, fortunately, I mean, most times a rental, it, it's if you have 12 months, they assume 11th month occupancy. So the person moves out. I mean, it's built into the system, uh, but it sounds like you just turn them right over. Uh, am I right, Amanda? Yeah, we normally have a two or three day. We we want to have a two or three day in between because this is not a normal cleaning when someone leaves. I mean, if they've been there for two, three, four, even six months, this is a deep clean, even though, yeah. you know, we recommend them getting cleanings monthly, every other week, whatever. Some don't, we can't force them to um, yeah. really. And so, yeah, it's a deep cleaning. So it takes our cleaning crew time to get in there and just really clean everything up. If do that, we keep our houses in tip top shape. So yeah. if there's anything wrong with it, then that has to be addressed before our next person checks. Right, in. right. 
because um, uh, five stars is the uh, is what you want. Five star reviews get you up to the yeah, top. Yeah, for sure. And, and how um, much more versus a longer term rental are you, are you charging? Short term is always going to be charged um, more. Yeah, we're about double. So yeah, we're we're a good double. If it's an insurance client, we may be triple. Right. So yeah, that's what I was asking bef before. Uh, who are your clients, generally speaking? A range, uh, yeah, sure. relocation. It it really is. We have contract workers. We have people relocating to the area. We have people in between um, selling their home and building a new home. Um, we have insurance claims. We have just, there's a whole array of, of people who are coming in. There's some people who are coming in just as a test run because they think they want to live in North Carolina, but they're just not quite sure. So right. they'll come in for a little while and just give it a test. So yeah. And what about the, the furniture? Are you buying it or are you leasing it? Oh no, we buy it. Yeah. We have wholesalers that we buy from. So there's ways to get into wholesalers. You know, we're lucky because we have High Point, the furniture capital of the right. United States. Right. So we have a lot of great wholesalers that are coming from High Point. Sounds right. like an awesome uh, an awesome uh, system. And uh, in the future, you're just going to continue. Hey, by the way, we've had a guest uh, on the show. He lives in Colorado, but he owns a lot of property in Belize, Boris uh, Manfeld. Do you know Boris? Boris Manfeld, right, Jim? I'm yeah, pretty sure I, that's I, I would have said like Mansfield, but you you could be it's, right. It's F-E-L-D, so that's Feld. Manfeld. Uh, anyway, I, I can't yeah. imagine Belize is too big a place, but he's a good guy and he has a whole bunch of things. I think he's actually uh, developing like whole sections. I, I think that's what his model is. Um, so- yeah, but we run into an up and coming area. Yeah, when you run into him, you can tell him you're a guest. You know, hey, yeah, we don't have coach yet or anything like that, but we should. If he's on Ambergris K, then I'm sure I'll run into him because yeah. Ambergris is very, very small. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would bet. That's why I mentioned it. Um, what kind of things do you have? Um, uh, in the near future right now. And uh, uh, I asked you to talk a little bit about your coaching program and you said you help people, but it really didn't show any of the specifics. You actually have a system where you talk about how to approach landlords, the whole land uh, uh, arbitrage thing, rental arbitrage thing. That's a different way of thinking. And everybody that I've talked to about that, you know, they, they cock their head like some golden retriever trying to figure out, Oh, what are you talking about? Um, but, how do you get landlords to understand you're doing a, a a rental business inside their rental? And what do they find out when they say you're making so much more than they would make? Do you run into that? Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're totally okay with it because I have a whole, um, I have a letter really that I follow and that I send to them. And, um, but it shows all of the pros for renting to us versus a normal tenant, you know, with us taking okay. care of the property what are the tenants going to go in and paint your baseboards every six months <laughs> or right. power wash your house, right? right. Uh, or have it professionally cleaned multiple times a month or, you know, right. so it's um, once the, once the landlord really understands the business model where we are using this as a marketing, you know, channel to bring in more clients for our real estate brokerage and that our agents are working with these people to purchase properties. They're not just normal yeah. tenants, right? Yeah. They're not going to, paint the vanity or, you know, leave broken down cars in the front yard, or if there's a leak in the kitchen and they're not going to put a cup under it, they're going to call us. You know, I've, I've had situations with my long-term rentals where there's a leak and they don't ever tell me. And then all of a sudden I'm having to replace all of the subfloors. And so that's never going to happen to them. And, and I have those conversations with them because long-term, long-term, um, uh, landlords, they get it. They've had yeah. this stuff happen to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's really refreshing yeah. for them. We have one landlord who has a lot of long term rentals and he's gradually going in, doing complete renovations, and then giving us those properties. 
And he's like, I'll do this because I know that you're going to take care of my property. This is the last time I'm going to have to renovate this property because I know when I get it Brilliant. back from you, it's yeah. in better shape. So, you're, so you're, you're basically their partner. You're, you're managing, you're making money off the management and they're probably making a couple of bucks extra too, right? Don't you pay a little well, bit more? Consistency, you know? No, no, you, 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 pay so? them, you pay them the, the market rent that, that you agreed upon that they probably yes. ask for. Well, yes, I pay yes. them they ask so, for, I don't pay them anything more. Let her so answer, so how many years <laughs> are you, you, you getting in your typical lease? I mean, you're not doing this for just a one year lease, right? Uh, well, sometimes I do. Yeah, sometimes I do just as like a test run, just to make sure I like working with the landlord, make sure I like the house. I don't want to be locked in. Um, so we'll do either a one or two year to start. And then my renewals are every two years. Yeah. Hmm. It, it so, makes if I, sense. so if I have a client, she has a pretty average house, I would say actually run down. It needs to be either torn down or improved upon. Uh, it sounds like the perfect kind of place and she's getting decent no. money no it doesn't what <laughs> doesn't what do sound like the perfect place no, no. it's a, it's a it, it's a newton so it's very desirable so if she's getting let's say 26 2700 and that's a month and i went in with new furniture and everything i mean that could be rented every three or four days for what do you think a thousand uh, I think you have to rethink this. So we only take about 10% of the properties that we actually see. And the reason for that is they have to be in great shape. I'm talking granite countertops. The floors look okay, good. So you're, you're not going to do the upgrades. No, no, we don't do the upgrades. If the landlord wants to do the upgrades, we more power to you. Like our, our investor who's going in and he's completely gutting these properties. That's his investment. So he's just knowing that that's the last time that he ever has to go into that property to do that renovation. And that's appealing to him, right? Sure. But I don't put money into fixing up someone else's property. Well, a, a little bit. I mean, you will paint the baseboards. You do pay for the cleaning. So there's a little bit of capital, but it's small capital compared to the long-term Well, the furniture gain. must still cost. I mean, it's not just furniture. Now you're getting dishes, pots and pans, right? Linens. Yeah. And and yeah. and cleaning these places, but okay. So you're charging them for the cleaning. So okay. Yeah, the furniture for us when we're doing three bed, three bath, which is kind of our standard. Um, we're about we're under ten thousand. Okay. So, and, that's so and, 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 and how job. are you amortizing that? You you're figuring every five years you're replacing the furniture. No, no. Um, I mean, we buy good furniture. We don't buy like Ikea stuff. So I know there's some, there's some crap. Unless Ikea furniture. is listening and, and we're happy to have you sponsor us, but uh, <laughs> right now, no. <laughs> and your furniture is great, Ikea. <laughs> but you have to put it saying. together. You have to, well, you get it there, but we haven't put it together for you. So good luck. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And the beds, you know, you have to have very sturdy beds. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you have to have that like it's you have to have good quality stuff. You can't just throw it together with some stuff that's going right. to get worn down. So, right. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say, yeah, you're going to have to replace your rugs and, and stuff like that. Um but it's it's not that often. You you'd be surprised. Like these right. people really do take better care of it. When they walk in, in a place is spotless and perfectly Always. designed. Always. They're not, you know, they're not going to mess it up. Most right. of them, right. if they walk into a place and there's already stains on the carpet or something like that, they're going to be like, oh, forget it. Like, yeah, who cares? So, so you know? what, what has surprised you? What, what Either like the most embarrassing moment in, in this business model or something like it really reconfirms that people are wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> no smoking, no pets, right? Yeah, no yeah. I mean, rephrase the question for me. <laughs> and, and any memorable people and what made them memorable? These are these are guests. I mean, it's almost like you're running uh, some kind of crazy hotel. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, I have a very memorable guest right now. Um, I've turned 
it was one of my long-term rentals and I renovated it and turned it into a short-term rental. Um, but it was, a, it's a house that my grandfather built in 1958. And so when I had that as a long-term rental, you know, it was, it was long-term rental grade. Right. And so we've gone in, we've made it pretty. We've done like this whole rustic farmhouse to it. And there was a couple that came and they, they, first off, they saw one of our carry properties, which is a new property, brand new, everything gorgeous. And then they're like, well, do you have anything else? And so they went to grandma's house is what I call it. Grandma's house. Um, they went to grandma's house. And as soon as they pull in the driveway, they're like, oh my God, this is so perfect. It's got so much character. And they walk inside and they're just like, ooh, in and on. And these people are taking the best care of this property. They just think it is the coolest property ever. And that just makes me feel really good. Um, so every time that you have someone come in and they're just like, they love your property as much as you do, it just feels good. And you get a lot of those. Yeah. Yeah. And anybody in real estate knows that, that someone, that how they feel when they show up there, that's hugely important. You know, does it feel like home? And they told you when they drove up. So. So that's how's Cabo. I've been to Cabo. Quite a quite a place. Yes, Cabo is wonderful. It's always sunny in paradise. <laughs> have you gone um, snorkeling with the whale sharks yet? I have, I have, yes. Yeah, it's and awesome. there's whale season right now too. So we just went out a few days ago, and uh, whales were just everywhere. I mean, we I think we called the whales to us because there was ten, you know, circling our boat. It was amazing. But you've been in the water with them, right? Yeah, those are over in La Paz. So that's about yeah. a two and a half hours from where I'm at. Yeah. You got to go in with a wetsuit and, and gloves and as much as you can, or you get stung up by the plankton. And, yes. and don't don't look anything like somebody named Jonah, because especially with the whales, that could be problematic. It's not that kind of whale. It's uh, not that kind of shark either. They're, they they got big mouths, though. You, you right. could fall. You know. Right. You know, this show goes by so quickly. Amanda, how can people get in touch with you? It's Amanda the Realtor uh, at gmail.com. Traveling Realtor. Yeah, it's I'm I'm pretty out there. I'm out there. Amanda <laughs> um, Williams. So Amanda the Traveling Realtor is how you're gonna find me. Um, there's a lot of Amanda Williams, so I just changed everything up. And now for all of my marketing, it's Amanda, the traveling realtor. So I have the website, I have the Instagram handles, I have all of that. And I do have a lot of free stuff too. So I do, um, I have a lot of free webinars that I do and just educational type stuff, download stuff sure. like that. Sure. If you go to my website, you'll be able to find all of that. And, and please take a moment and join us, Amanda, on Workplace, Castles, Luxury Group. Yes, I will definitely do that. And everyone out there, follow us on everything. We're all over social media. The Exponential Files. Do it before midnight tonight. Operators are standing by. and uh, <laughs> Jim and Larry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, join us next week for another great show of someone you'd like to be. Um, thank you so much from Amanda Williams. Uh, thank you. Great Amanda. to have you on the, on the show. Great show.